There's a rich history that Ole Miss football brings with it as it enters its 125th season. But there was once a time before it all seemed so familiar. Before there was a vault to lock. We welcome you to Vaught Hemingway Stadium. This is the place to be in college football right now. Before the Grove became well, the Grove. The epicenter of tailgating in the fall. The scene in the Grove where they never lose a party. Before land sharks roamed the earth. Give them the signal there of sharks. Fins up, the land sharks are swarming. Before the first family of football. The pride of Ole Miss, quarterback Archie Mann. What a throw by Eli Manning. Before a number meant more than words. I've grown up never being a quitter. I'm not going to quit. I just can't quit. And before sugar tasted so sweet. Marshall Davis presents the Sugar Bowl trophy to Coach Johnny Vaught of Old Miss. So, how did we get here? Hey, baby, you got to love it. Oh, you got to love it. It just couldn't be more perfect. Wow. You got to believe, man. You got to believe. It's goosebump time in Oxford, Mississippi. It all started in the fall of 1893, when Latin professor Dr. A.L. Bondurant gathered up a small group of students to field the university's first football team. Ole Miss hosted Southwestern Baptist University of Jackson, Tennessee in its first game. The Rebels won 56-0, setting a winning tradition into motion. But with world wars and financial collapse occupying the forefront of American consciousness at the beginning of the 20th century, spectator sports were left to occupy a background role. During this time, Ole Miss football slowly built its foundation. Constructing Hemingway Stadium in 1915, joining the Southeastern Conference in 1933, and playing in the Orange Bowl in 1936. After World War II, Ole Miss stocked its shelves with battle-hardened talent. Charlie Connerly returned to Ole Miss from the Marines, and Barney Poole came back from the Army. The university hired Navy flight instructor Johnny Vault as an assistant coach in 1946 and he was promoted to head coach one year later. Heading into the 1947 season, sports writers picked Ole Miss to finish last in the SEC. Those same writers quickly found out that Vault was the wrong man to doubt. He installed a dynamic passing offense that took the league by storm. Led by Connerly and Poole, Vault's first squad went nine and two and won the school's first SEC championship. In 1952, the Rebels took the leap into the national picture, upsetting number three Maryland 21-14 in Oxford for what the AP named the number one upset of the year. I don't think they did that, but what, that's the game that put us in the big time football. Vaught had turned Ole Miss football into a juggernaut. Johnny Vaught, a football genius who works his wonders at the University of Mississippi. The Rebels play the kind of football he teaches. A variety of power, magic, blended in a wing T mold. The university's culture became entwined with the football team's success. There's always a good view from the Grove, the colorful band filling the campus with music. Featuring a powerful passing attack, the Rebels have gone to a long line of bowl games. Time to start the 21st Sugar Bowl football class. Activities begin with the arrival of the University of Mississippi squad. Fourth ranked power in the nation. Jubilant Ole Miss players hoist coach Johnny Vaught on their shoulders. After the decade long climb to the top of the college football mountain, the 1959 squad entered the season with the summit in sight. The Rebels clobbered LSU in the Sugar Bowl 21 0, avenging a regular season loss to the Tigers to win a share of their first national championship. The Rebels followed up their 1959 performance by repeating as national champions in 1960, and then again in 1962. Johnny Vaught is regarded as the most successful coach in the South today. His success is a product of hard work, and more hard work. 
and the knack of coming up with a fine quarterback each year. Vaught may have saved his best quarterback for last. Led by sophomore quarterback Archie Manning, number 18, the Rebs were attempting to be the first Ole Miss club since 1910 to win one against the Crimson Tide. After leading the Rebels to upset victories over number 12 Alabama and number 11 LSU, Archie Mania took over Oxford. Even with an incredible quarterback, Vaught never stopped searching for ways to motivate his team. I'm often asked the most memorable game during the 17 years I broadcast for Ole Miss. That's easy. The 1969 38 to nothing win over Tennessee. That's the year Tennessee linebacker Steve Kiner, when a writer said Ole Miss had the horses to win, told the press the Rebels had only a bunch of mules. Well, that game, for some reason or other, got to be the game of the Mew. So we go down to play those guys, and, and uh, they're, they're the ones that got a good football team, and they're headed to the Orange Bowl. I mean, they're undefeated, third in the country. They're headed to the Orange Bowl, and they're, they're solid. Offensively and defensively, they're just solid. It's first down for the Rebels. Manning to the left. Cox his arm. He throws the home run. He's open at 15, to the 10, to the 5. Out of bounds on the three-yard line. Manning motion off to the right. Manning rolling to the right. Manning looks. He throws into the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown to Ronnie Myers! And then he got by, I think, 38 to nothing. After his senior year in 1970, Archie was drafted by the Saints, and Vaught retired on the advice of his doctor. It was the end of an era. Vaught's legacy is staggering. Final record of 190 wins, 61 losses, and 12 ties. Six SEC titles, three national titles, SEC Coach of the Year six times, and 26 All-Americans. Vaught was a master at, at, at getting everybody on the same wavelength. You know, he never, ever, hardly ever chewed a player out. He'd get busted or chew them out, or he'd get wobble and they would bring him out and then Vaught would walk up. They were walking off the field, their head down, tears in their eyes, and he'd walk up and put that big arm around and say, now look, son, I understand the situation. One of these days, I'm gonna really need you. When I need you, I'm gonna call on you. And when he called on you, you remember the guy that put his arm around him, not the guy that cussed you. And he could ask you to do almost anything, and you'd do it. Following a legend is difficult anywhere. For Ole Miss, the 1970s were filled with highs All over, Mississippi has beaten Notre Dame. And lows. LSU has won 17 to 16. What can I say? There's nothing really much to say. The football program took a big picture stride in 1972, integrating with the arrival of Ben Williams and James Reed. But the Rebels struggled to maintain the consistency that Ole Miss had come to expect under Coach Vaughn. Ole Miss needed a spark to turn the program around. In 1983, Ole Miss turned to former player Billy Brewer to lead the Rebels. Coach Brewer was on the legendary 59 team and vowed to bring the distinctive toughness from the Vault years back to the program. At the halfway point of the 1983 season, the Rebels' new toughness started to show. The Rebels rode a four-game win streak into the Egg Bowl, one victory away from a chance to return to a bowl game in Brewer's first season. Like many Egg Bowls, it was a close game in nasty conditions that came down to the final seconds. Here comes the field goal team, and here's your ball game. Here's your whole bit, your ball game, the whole thing, all wrapped up into one. We will be kicking against the wind, and the wind is a side wind. It'll be a 27-yard chip shot, ready for the snap. There it is, it is placed down, there's the kick. It turns, it turns, it is jumping! Three points, here we come. That ball, the wind took it, it 
way straight up and went to the left. It didn't even get to the goal post. On behalf of the Independence Bowl, sending you an invitation to play the Air Force Academy. <laughs> This university has been down so long, and we need some good things to happen to us. And, you know, and, and with under Coach Brewer, they're happening, you know? What else can you act for? Bulls win in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. They beat LSU at Tiger Stadium. Ole Miss has defeated Mississippi State 17 to 10 in Oxford. Along with bringing winning back to Ole Miss, Coach Brewer also established a deeper link between the Ole Miss football team and its community. Here's Coach Billy Brewer and his football team as they walk through the Grove. That's a new tradition here at Ole Miss. Uh, they take off about two hours before game time, walk through the Grove amongst all the alumni. It didn't take long before that link was put to the ultimate test. They're passing buckets through the stands for Chucky Mullins as several of the Ole Miss students are taking up a collection from uh, all the Rebel fans here. If you're listening to us in the stands, we hope that you will open your heart and help out Chucky in uh, what will be a very expensive and long haul. In 1989, redshirt freshman defensive back Chucky Mullins was emerging as a future star. Side in the end zone, knocked away by the Rebels! It's Chucky Mullins, a freshman from Russellville, Alabama, slapped it to the ground, incomplete. But a seemingly routine play would change his life forever. Our thoughts are with Chucky as they've got a stretcher out right now. I'm going to put him on a stretcher. Let's hope that everything is all right because uh, that was a vicious lick as he lowered the boom in the back of Brad Gaines. The collision left Mullins paralyzed. The recovery was long and painful. While he recovered, the Ole Miss community came together to respond with an outpouring of love and care. Over $1 million were raised to cover Chucky's medical expenses and build a specially designed house for him in Oxford. I want to thank everybody that's been behind me and just keep on praying for me. I'm going to get better. Thank you. Chucky worked hard to finish his degree while cheering on the team he loved so much. But it wasn't meant to be. On May 6, 1991, he tragically passed from complications related to his injury. His courage and determination are unequal. Chucky has given something to each of us, and we will remember and appreciate him for the many different reasons. A very special young man has just passed through here. but Chucky Mullins' spirit lives on in Oxford. It is impossible to not see or feel the impact he left on Ole Miss. Didn't nobody believe in us. Don't nobody still believe in us but us. After falling on hard times in the mid-1990s, a small group of Rebels was tasked with turning the program around. With just 58 scholarship players, the group kept the program afloat until reinforcements could arrive. So it wasn't really until 97 when we started getting a lot of the uh, new talent in there and it started paying off. We are winning, started winning some SEC games. Rebels here to be going for two. Oh my goodness. There's the snap, looking to throw, back of the end zone. Oh no, he got it! Oh he got it. Peterson! Peterson a yard deep, makes the catch, the Rebels lead! 15-14! Us battling and competing and having the opportunity to sign some of the guys like Romero Miller and Deuce McAllister and Rufus French and Joe Gunn, it bridged the gap and it, it got us to a got us to a certain point. Onside kick attempt, and there it is. It's popped high in the air, and it's caught by Deuce at the 40. He's to the 30. He may go. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Oh, Miss. Peterson's going to be able to make a catch at the 8, and he's going to try to return it. 25, 30, needs one more block. He could go. Touchdown, Ole oh, Miss. Wow. You got to believe, man. <laughs> you got to believe. For the win. It is up. It is good. Ole Miss wins it! Throw looking in the end zone, in trouble, hit, throws it, it's high! The Ole Miss Rebels have knocked off the Auburn Tigers! 24-17! So the pitch is to Deuce, now he's going to 
throw back to the near side to Miller. He catches 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Wow! He's doing it all tonight, Deuce! And He's doing it all tonight! With momentum surging, the son of an Ole Miss legend was tapped to take the Rebels into the new millennium. For Ole Miss, it's Eli Manning, famous bloodline coupled with size and the great arm. Waiting his time, waiting his time, waiting his time, finally getting an opportunity to start this year. And he is calm, cool, and collected. 6'4", 215 pounds out of New Orleans, Louisiana. He was a rare combination of being very, very talented, but also being smart enough to do something about it. Because there are some people that are really talented, but don't study the game. There's some that are that, that study the game and they're really smart, but they're not quite good enough to do anything. But he had both. But the thing that makes him most special is what's inside his helmet. He is so smart and so good at the line of scrimmage. Eli's talents were at their best when the Rebels needed him the most. Now the Rebels have the football at their own 41-yard line with a minute 34 left. And this is it for Ole Miss, down by four. Can they break the Alabama jinx, or will Alabama get another one? Manning, pump fakes, looks to run. Now stops, lost it down the field, it's towards Sanford, caught at the 20, 15, 10, 5, out of bounds at the four yard line. You talk about a quarterback with poise and presence. Eli Manning showing it all right now. Manning back to throw, swings it to gun. He catches it at the one, drives into the end zone. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Looks, looks, has time, fires it, it's caught by Ziegler, the 10, 5, touchdown, Ole Miss! Swings it near side, has his man, Townsend, caught at the 40, to the 30, to the 20, knocked off his feet at the 12-yard line! What a call by Eli Manning and a perfect pass. Plenty of touch from the two, there's the stamp to give to Jacobs, right side, he's in the end zone! Touchdown, Ole Miss! got to believe, because I'm going to tell you, you're never out of a game with number 10 as your quarterback. Never. Eli capped off his senior season by leading Ole Miss to the Cotton Bowl, with the Rebels seeking their first New Year's Day Bowl win since Archie's Sugar Bowl victory in 1970. Beautiful day. Two schools that have really gotten themselves back onto the national scene. This is, I mean, this game is huge for both of these programs, to be here at the Cotton Bowl. Ole Miss on the move, a fake to Turner, and Turner's oh. wide open. Touchdown. The Rebels won 31-28 to cap off Eli's career. Eli Manning has been a part of a resurgence of this once proud college program. Eli reintroduced Ole Miss to the national audience, and the new generation of Rebels would not disappoint. Big point after coming up here, 31-30 Ole Miss. He kicks his box! The Rebels get the block, Ken Trail Rocket! Dexter breaks the tackle, heads to the sidelines on a drop step. He angles back to the 15, he's to the 5, touchdown! Rebels! Gonna pass. He is, and he's got a man wide open, it's Hodge! Touchdown Ole Miss! The throw to the end zone is caught! Touchdown! Dante Moncrief strikes again! Feed him, feed him, feed Moncrief! Waiting for the snap back, there it is, it's high, there's the kick, he's got the distance, it's on its way, it is gone! Ole Miss has upset number six LSU, Andrew Ritter. The pass is going to be incomplete. The previous play is under further review. Left yes. foot down, yes. left yes. foot down, that's got to be an interception. The ball was intercepted in the has knocked off number one Alabama. It angles up the middle of the field, it's hit. Oh, he's broken clear. He's to the 20, he's to the 30. Can he get there? He's got a blocker. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Oh, man! The snap is high. Kelly grabs it, wants to throw, fires it up in the air. Treadwell can't get it. Deflection is caught! Deflection is caught! And down the sidelines is Adamojo. He's to the end zone. He's in there. Touchdown, oh, Dumps it back to the near side, and a big guy walks in the end zone, Larry B. Tunsil. The Ole Miss Rebels are going to win the 2016 All-State Sugar Bowl. It's over. Ole Miss 31, Mississippi State 28, the final score in the 2017 Egg Bowl.
This is going to be the start of something really, really special. And man, I cannot wait to get started. Starkville's got the Bulldogs, Athens, Georgia too. Auburn's got the Tigers, and so does LSU. There's doors and balls in Tennessee, Cox and Caroline. But for every team you offer, I wouldn't give a wooden dime. See, there's only one team that matters, and if you ask me, I'll tell you. If you want to be with the winners, you want the red and blue. Kentucky's cats are wild But all them teams roll into one Can't stand up against my ribs But if you're feeling lucky You suckers place your bets I'm for the red and blue I'm for Ken Toler, Romero and Archie Hill. There's two time Terrence and the Johnson boys And big old T-Way too Gibson Wayne and John Forcade Yeah, I'm for And the little warrior too Buford Coleman and the dog They all bleed red 